So now let's compare bagging versus pasting. What are the things, right? In the first two points, you see that both bagging and pasting allows training instances, which is basically data rows to be sampled several times across multiple predictors, right? So here one can happen here, here and here as well, right? Because in case of this is this is a bagging bagging samples and these are your pasting samples right so what the first two points say is that in case your row numbers so your row number one could be repeated across multiple samples same here one could be repeated across multiple samples but only in case of bagging one could be repeated within the sample multiple times right that is not the case with pasting because in case, case of case of pasting you are selecting samples without replacement so one once have been selected cannot be repeated here right because it's without replacement in case of bagging it can be repeated here because it's with replacement so one is rep one is repeated so the data point row number one is basically repeated multiple times in the same subset of data so those are the first two points that both bagging and pasting allow instances to be sampled several times across multiple predictors but only bagging allows training instances to be sampled several times for the same predictor right so for the same predictor these are your say you are training multiple predictors here right this is your more predictor model m1 this is a model m2 this is a model m3 you're training you're going to train your model m1 on this m2 on this so for each individual predictor it can get repeated but for across multiple predictors both of them allow predictions right only boot bagging kind of allows you repetitions for the same predictor now the second stage bootstrapping basically introduces a bit more diversity in the subsets than each predictor is trained on so bagging end up with a slightly higher bias than pasting now let's understand why is that why is there a higher diversity in case of bagging in case of bagging what are the number of so if you say you have n possible options here right n data points here so you have n data points and you have got to select samples of size m right so for each of them in case of bagging you have n possible options right because you are selecting with uh, there are n possible option data points to select for each of those m places right so number of total possible data sets are n to the power m right in case of pasting that's not the case in case of pasting you have n options for the first you have n minus 1 n minus 2 and so forth so n c m right so those are the possible options in case of pasting and obviously you would appreciate that n to the power m is much higher than n c m right so which is why you end up with a lot more diversity in case of bagging as compared to pasting so what happens with higher diversity is that your bootstrap algorithms tend to have a slightly higher bias because they are the, because it doesn't see the same data points right? in case of pasting you are seeing data point one in the first case data point two data point three again in the same multiple case right and it consists of a lot lesser diversity so each of those models are seeing a lot more data points in case of bootstrapping that is not the case because in case of bootstrapping if you're selecting 100 out of them 30 could be just the sample data point number one right in case of pasting you know that all of those 100 are different unique points in case of bagging you know do not know those 100 data points are all unique or not right it could be one repeated multiple times over so in all bootstrapping is actually out of those 100 points actual unique points are much lesser hence you are training on a very 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 small subset of data right so that's why you probably would tend to end up with a higher bias in case of bagging as compared to pasting in pasting you are seeing 100 data points at least you know all those 100 are unique in case of bagging you do not know so your effective number of unique samples are much lesser so you have a higher bias in case of bagging as compared to pasting but what happens next is because you have you're trained on multiple diverse data sets in case of bagging your variance of each of those individual product predictors are extremely high but when you combine them in an ensemble they come down and it's much lower when you combine them right because your variance across each of those models are extremely high this is the whole concept of ensembling that we have been talking about each each of your individual predictors have extremely high variance but when you combine them your variance comes down by a lot more in case of bagging because the variance is a lot more higher across each of those models when you combine them your final variance comes down even long, lower right 
because it's trained on a multiple so it knows what are the possible it's trained on a different diversity of data sets right as compared to pasting pasting has not seen that many diverse data sets so that's why bagging has seen more variance obviously each of those models are individually more varied but when you combine them the variance is lower so finally overall bagging often results in better models which explains why it is generally used industry wise also uh, most of the algorithms that you see out there use unsampling which are based on specialist methods and which are based on random sam sampling of data points they are mostly bagging versus compared to pasting but again this is not a blanket statement please don't take it by heart that uh, bagging always Rohit has probably taught this that bagging always works much better than pasting it's not a blanket statement it's generally bagging might work better but that is that's just a blanket that's just that's just a indicator statement and obviously however and second can that kind of follows that if you have given spare time and cpu processing you might really want to do cross validation to evaluate both bagging as well as pasting so now there's a third concept which is called out of bag evaluation which probably some of you might be thinking already in the back of your mind that okay hold on in case of bagging i'm selecting 100 even though 100 are not unique and now even if i select 10 samples i'm gonna be left out with a lot of data which has never been used right this is this is a high probability rate when i'm doing this kind of a processing that i'm using one 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 so out of this i probably out of this 100 data points probably only 70 are unique right and again some unique are across each of them right so even if i combine the entire sub sample there would be some data points which i would never use right so that's exactly the concept that is a disadvantage probably you can say drawback with bootstrapping person in bootstrapping you would tend to end up with a lot more examples that are never used right so what we did here is somehow use that disadvantage to our advantage what we have is here so let's kind of formally go through that so probability of each sample being selected is one by n right in with replacement because you're every time you n, n samples right in case of pasting it kind of goes one by n one by n minus one one by n minus two in case of bootstrapping it's always one by n right because whenever you take a sample you put it back in the box right so probability of each sample being selected is one by n so probability of it not being selected is one minus one by n and if m such samples are created then the probability of sample never being selected is one minus one by n to the power m right so when n and m approach large numbers so basically which is to say you have a lot of data points and also every time you are selecting a sizable chunk so then if that is the case you are kind of going towards you would tend to see that your probability of a sample never being selected in any of the sample is roughly 0.368 what does that roughly translate to which basically says that 30 percent point three six is one third of your data in case of bootstrapping when you at least have large number of samples size and large number of data points you would know that at least one third of your data point is never used so good thing about that why don't you use it for evaluation right that, that's simple and that's very intuitive that probably i have one third of data which i'm while i'm trying to do fitting I am kind of not able to utilize them. So what do I do of the extra data? Let's use that for evaluation. Let's use that for validating our algorithm. Let's use that to kind of see if our model is fitting well or not. So this is this is a concept that is called out of bag evaluation. And this is not a concept which is just limited to bagging or per se. It's a concept which is widely uh, in use across other things also. But let's now understand how this kind of works in case of scikit. So in say, case of scikit, as of now, when we were trying to do bagging classifier, what we did was we first had to figure out which is a decision tree classifier which we want to go ahead with. Number of such decision tree classifiers, 100. Each of the samples should have 100 data points. And finally, you have to also say OOB score equals to true. This is the parameter that you have to set to true if you want to kind of get an OOB evaluation, right? So. So now you do an out of bag. So what we are doing now is a bagging classifier only, but now with out of bag estimation being set as true, right? And now let's see how the accuracy kind of comes out to The accuracy is 0.78, which is slightly higher. So now this is a good point of time to talk about something called random forest. What is random forest? Frankly, there's nothing but a bootstrap aggregation. So bootstrap sampling of multiple decision trees. So bagging classifier of multiple decision trees, nothing but a 
random forest except for except for there's a small change so everything is exactly same right you're going to have a bagging classifier which means you're going to take your data split it into multiple parts train a decision tree in each of them and then you're going to combine them right so that's exactly the concept here in random forest also random forest is exactly same it's a bootstrap aggregation so bootstrap sampling of data set and then multiple so it's a bagging classifier of decision tree that's about it there's nothing more or nothing less except one particular thing which is in case of decision tree remember for every time there's a split happening it can the algorithm the chi square or genie basically considers all possible features right if there are 100 features you're going to consider all 100 of them that is slightly different here in case of random forest you're not going to do that because it's obviously if you're doing multiple search trees it's computationally expensive so what you're going to do is at every step you're going to consider a random subset of those features and that's it apart from that everything is exactly same so it's a decision tree ensemble how is this ensemble selected through bootstrap aggregation what does that mean take your data split it into parts train on multiple parts and finally for a new test data points take predictions from each of those models and average them that's it that's all about there is in random forest so we are going to cover that in a more detailed lectures later on but for now that's it so there are two parts one is bootstrap aggregation which is exactly same as what we have learned here the second part is instead of considering all possible features during splitting consider a random subset that's about it so now let's try and go ahead obviously john is now someone who's very smart and he has figured that out that all this while we have been discussing techniques which are extremely naive right all of this voting and all of these things right so we have already we have not been that naive within ourselves we have talked about something which are more than naive aggregations like weighted average and all of that where your weights are decided based on accuracies aucs and all of that log on to gray adams learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates.